Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Daniel Keane, um, and I'm very, very happy to be joined with Clint Smith and Kate Diggins for today's uh, BTC Software Company Secretarial webinar. Um, now, before we start, just to confirm that everyone can hear me, um, if you can please just put a Y into the questions box onto the GoToMeeting panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, that will just confirm that you can hear me perfect. So those of you have done that already, which is great. So um, without further ado, we can get started. So as I said, yeah, my name's Dan Keen, um, and today we're gonna to be bringing you the company secretarial webinar. Um, so Clint is gonna demonstrate uh, the BTC software solution. Um, now this is specifically for our, our customers on today's webinar whether you are uh, already using our company secretary or you might not yet use our company secretarial webinar, uh, this should be really insightful to give you uh, all of the key functionality found within the solution. And then Kate is gonna be taking you through the integration that we have with the practice management software. So I'm gonna do a very, very quick presentation and then I'm gonna hand it straight over to, uh, to Clint and Kate. Um, now I've listed uh, myself there as a contact. If you do have any questions, um, please do use the GoToMeeting panel to ask questions throughout the webinar, and then we should have some time to answer those uh, questions at the end. So do ask questions when they come to you. It might be that we answer the question a bit later on in the webinar, but that's absolutely fine. Um, and if you do have any questions following the webinar, or if you're interested in a, a recording, um, then you're more than welcome to contact me and my contact details I will put at the bottom uh, or at the end of the presentation. So a brief company history. So we were founded in 1999. Uh, we got 2,500 practices that rely on our software, 1,000 accountants in business, which equates to over 15,000 users. We're all UK based, including our support and development teams. And we are very proud of the fact that we won uh, several uh, accountancy software excellence awards. Now, to give you a, a kind of a brief solution timeline, um, as I mentioned, we were established in 1999, initially specializing in corporation tax. Uh, following that, we added our self-assessment and practice management solutions. And in 2014, we kind of added the final piece of the puzzle to the, what's now known as the solution suite, which was our accounts production module. Um, so those of you who are customers, uh, it might not be that you're using our full solution suite, so it's definitely worth checking out those other modules that you might not be using. Uh, for example, if you're just using our practice management and self-assessment, or if you don't yet have our accounts production, uh, which includes stuff like charity accounts, um, then again, contact us and we can set up a demo, a trial, uh, or send you the relevant videos for those. And in 2017, we introduced MTD for VAT. Company secretarial was then introduced. We then, following that, introduced the integration, which was the key thing and what we're really excited to be showing you today. And then 2020 onwards, uh, I hope there'll be uh, some further COSEC integration and obviously the big one being MTD for business. So that'll be filing your quarterly and monthly uh, self-assessment tax returns for when that comes around. Now, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass over to uh, Kate and Clint, uh, and they are going to be showing you the uh, BT solution, the COSEC solution. Uh, now, me and obviously Kate and Clint are in separate locations, so if there is a slight delay in terms of passing the, um, the presentation over to those guys, uh, then you'll have to slightly bear with us on this one. But I'm just going to make them the presenter now, and they're going to talk you through the solution. So over to you. Clint and Kate. Right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Hope you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear us uh, as well uh, as clearly as you could hear Dan. Uh, we're going to be going through the COSEC um, uh, today in terms of both features of the product and also uh, the strategic reasons uh, either between choosing COSEC or sticking with WebFire or uh, choosing this COSEC product over uh, other COSEC products. So um, hopefully you can see a screen uh, with a uh, initial menu on. I'll just go into that in a moment. I'm going to put you into two groups. Over at Companies House, we, we, we find that around about 50% of all the companies that are filed are filed through software, 50% are filed through their own web filing. And so I'm going to put you either you're a web filer or you use existing software, 
And I'm just gonna uh, address the web file list first because it's nice and easy to do. And your questions will be, why should we move to a system and pay for each company to uh, when we can do it for free uh, at company's house? Well, the reason for that is obviously you're gonna be focused on confirmation statements particularly, but also you realize that you can also put your forms in, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the reasons, okay? First of all, um, your initial thought probably about the confirmation statement uh, is a good starting point. Um, two things apply here. First of all, because the data is gonna be on your COSEX system and not over at co company's house, you own and control that data. So when you go to company's house and you click all the directors and the shareholders and say, yes, this is correct, this is correct, this is correct, it's because it's standalone, it's not your data. So when you go using CS Solution and you file a confirmation statement, it is literally down to two clicks uh, because your changes you are also doing through the system and last year's data, you're already in control of it. You've been reminded because you own the data by the system through emails and through reports off the system that the work needs doing. And therefore you get to do the work, confirmation statement. Yes, that looks good. Click, off it goes, job done. Um, you have an account at company's house, which is automatically uh, billed with your, your um, filing fee. We don't surcharge that in any sense. That belongs to you. Um, you, you only pay for the actual uh, software here. So you're right in that sense. However, there's something much more important. Um, at least it is if things start to go wrong uh, with a client. And that is company's house is a registry. It is not a keeper of affidavits. They, uh, if you file a company's house, your filing has the legal standing pretty much of a birthday card, really. Um, it's just a notice. So the fact of a director being appointed, that director is appointed, an APO1 form is sent in, that's absolutely fine, but it does not mean that that director is appointed. You need a minute, and you need a minute that's signed by the existing officers if it's a director's resolution, if they have the right authority to do so, or by the members if they don't have the right authority to do so according to the articles. So what having a system does is it it, it helps if things go wrong with the clients. Um, and we have been aware of cases where people have been you know, trying to defend their directorship in a company whilst other directors have been trying to get rid of them only to find that they were never a director in the first place because the minutes got done. Minutes are an integrated part of any decent COSEX system. And they are they serve the client and they serve you because if it goes wrong for the client, they're going to come back to you and say, why did that happen? So minutes probably, in terms of safety, you're working safely, are at least as important as the fact that it's somewhat easier, very easy to file confirmation statements. So that's one. Um, so two headings for you to write down, CS01, easier to file, minutes, very important. Next heading for you to write down, dividends. Okay. Now, dividends, uh, we think of dividends as accountants in terms of uh, tax and uh, ways of paying people and optimizing their tax situation. Dividends come from shares. Shares are in COSEC. So if you have the correct balance again because the data is in your COSEX system it's not individually held at company's house your dividends can be produced automatically by simply having your your punter walk through the door and say I want to distribute three thousand pounds the system knows who the shareholders are at the date the distribution takes place it knows how to produce certificates it knows how to do the division and the amounts of money it knows how to do separate share classes those that bear dividends those that are voting etc so literally again enter the date you want the, the dividend payable on uh, or the qualifying date and the amount and then bingo you you have a, a whole series of um uh, the necessary uh, dividend vouchers produced for you uh, in pdf ready to go um, your, if you have separate um, teams in your office that deal with um, uh, tax in terms of personal tax and dividends, then we have unlimited logins to COSEC. So they will be able to get a login to COSEC and look at the dividend tables, which are coming from very good quality source data. So for your web filers, easier confirmation statements, minutes which are important, 
dividends, which will increase accuracy and save labor, okay? And then there's a few other things as well. Um, you do, we do formations in conjunction with uh, First Corporate in, in Cardiff and Bristol. Um, so you can form any kind of company. Generally speaking, the client will type in their own data, but that data will seamlessly move through uh, into COSEC. So when you're onboarding uh, new clients who are forming companies, essentially a minimal um, effort is needed because that formation goes straight through into COSEC with its correct dates for its first filing. So you get integration of formations, okay? So then um, the other thing, of course, is that most of you, uh, all of you, I imagine, will, will have some clients who have more than one company. So here, um, the, you can look at the, a list of companies, you can look at a list of people, you can pick up a company, and you can see all the people that are connected into that company using the connections menu, whether they're directors, shareholders. But you can do it the other way around. So you can look at a person, John Smith, and say, what are his companies? And you'll see he's connected to ABC Limited, DEF Limited, et cetera, et cetera. And what this means is, again, better quality, quicker, faster work for you web filers, because if he changes his address, change of address is applicable to both companies at the same time, the filing is more accurate and simpler to do, et cetera, et cetera. So people involved in more than one company, uh, again, another benefit of using a system, okay? Um, and then a couple of minor ones as well, uh, one which may not be so minor actually, um, leaving clients. So leaving clients, you need to send them off. One of the things you need to send in their leaving pack, of course, is a, a full set of company registers. Those company registers in presentation quality and PDF are in the COSEC system. So leaving clients, again, save a little bit of time, nice presentation to hand on to the, uh, to the ne next uh, unfortunate chap that has to deal with the troublesome client that's leaving. Um, so that's that as well. Something else? Uh, two. Two more things, I, I think. Well, one more, one more thing here that applies to us and our, our, our main competition mainly, uh, and, and none of the other uh, COSEC systems. So I'm just talking about the general reason why you should have a COSEC system if you are a web filer. And that is um, with, with our system here, I'm just gonna block out a line. Hopefully you can see this. Um, this line here uh, is being blocked out there. We are involved in a number of synchronization um, um, activities that are going on all the time in the background, both between BTC uh, Solution Center and Companies House itself. So one of the things which we uh, noticed in, in, in life is that occasionally you will get a, a client who's got a, a registered office at his premises, Companies House write to him, say, we're about to strike you off. In the meantime, he's moved office and hasn't told them. He doesn't get the letter. Three days before or even three days after the company gets struck off, you get to find out about it. Doesn't happen with the COSEC system because we are constantly monitoring key information at Companies House and presenting it to you. So here where I've blocked that line out is where the system has, has become aware that one of your client companies has received a notice to be uh, struck off. So they, they, they've gone into the Gazette. So rather than having three three days notice, uh, you, you're probably going to have over a year's notice to, to, to get that sorted out. So those, I think I'm going to stop there with the advantages of web filing. This is costing you less, I think, less than five pounds a year for a company in most cases for all these extra benefits, the minutes, the dividends, the formations, multiple people, your control of the data, filing CSO1s, um, workflow processes. So obviously because you own the data, we control uh, information that comes out to you that you need to know about getting things done. So you are hopefully going to avoid fines on late filing for accounts, um, notification for strike offs, just for a few pounds a year for a company. So I think very good value. And that's where I'm going to stop specifically addressing those people who are considering whether to go from web filing to a system because I feel that is probably an appropriate justification of going to a system. So the other group of people that I hope I'm addressing are people who have a COSEC system already, 
and are wondering why do we want to switch over to BTCCS solution? And there are two significant reasons, okay? So one of which is to do with uh, our system competing with other systems. And the other of which is, to, is essentially the no-brainer. So I'm gonna start off with a no-brainer. BTCCS solution connects to the rest of BS, uh, to the, re the rest of BTC. So if you've got registered um, uh, offices, you've got directors' addresses, that sort of thing, if they're in a, a BTCCS solution, uh, essentially you go to the synchronization, which um, Kate will be showing you shortly, and you literally copy the stuff across into the, the rest of the thing. A very nice, simple um, um, integration of the data where you choose when you do it and you choose which items go over, but just enables you to have common data, cut down discrepancies and differences between the data. So if you've got a COSEC system, um, and you, if you've got a, a main platform supplied by BTC, it just is a no-brainer that you should have the COSEC supplied by BTC as well. So that's that's the one reason. The other reason is I think that, that there are two um, current competing systems um, in the COSEC market and a number of legacy older systems. Both, both of the two market leaders are in the cloud, ourselves and our main competitor. <laughs> Um, so you are looking at the advantages that I've given to the web filing people cover both systems. Our system, we completely automate the PSCs. So what happens with the PSCs is that obviously they are formed from the movement of shares, the allotment, the transfer of shares, purchase of own shares, complex share transactions, conversions and that sort of thing different share classes with voting shares, non-voting shares, dividend bearing shares. Also, um, entities such as joint shareholders where the, each holder is considered to have the full measure of control, even though there are two of them, so you can actually have more than 100% of control, and ditto with trustees of trusts, okay? All of it's automated, not, not just the simple transactions. So when you look at the PTC, uh, uh, PSC register in BTCCS solution, you don't enter any data at all. So first of all, that does a number of things. There are still a lot of legacy companies out there when the legislation came in 2016, people said, we don't know, they have no PSCs, uh, largely because at the time they didn't understand what to put, there's still plenty of those out there. Um, they will get updated if they're, if you, if they're incoming into your practice. Um, and the, the, the other thing is that the special categories, as, a, as the shares move around, the special types, the trustees and joint shareholders, can get very complex as to who has got what. So, uh, and, and also, you know, you'll have some companies where you've got plenty of people who've got shares that also have to be noted, maybe thousands of shares of a non-voting type, and only, say, 10 or 15 shares of a, a voting type, all completely automated. So the, the, the implication from that is that as in the good old days of the annual return, you could um, allocate the filing of uh, annual returns to um, uh, uh, less qualified staff, you would say diplomatically. <laughs> um, you, you can't really do that when the PSC legislation came in because the PSC legislation is complicated. So we've simplified that out of the equation. So now you can, um, you can include C CSO1 filing, and PSC uh, filing, as part of a, just an administrative task for most simple companies. And uh, uh, obviously not to say that you shouldn't just have a look and see how, what the system's produced for you uh, for the complex ones. So having said that, so that's ours. And then we, we, we also have a, a, a cute little thing as well with the registered office. I don't know if you have your phones at the ready, but um, you, you, as you're aware, you have to produce a registered office list and stick it in your window so that everyone can see all the companies that have a registered office in your address. So we provide for that. And we also provide for something which wasn't available at the time the Companies Act was um, produced, but it might be of interest, and we, we, we certainly haven't had anyone in trouble for using it. And that is, we can produce a list of registered offices, and I'll just go check with my colleague, uh, the registered offices 
Uh, yeah, that two will show up. Okay. okay. So basically, you have to tick that you're aware that the uh, that this wasn't available when you you did that. Mm -hmm. um, and there there are notes there explaining you know the the, the what we think is a very small risk in you actually using this. Uh, would that be the right data there? Eighty eleven forty. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make up the QR code now. So if you have phones and we can see this QR code coming up. Uh, there it is. Click on it. Hopefully, you can see this uh, PDF. Why? Right, because it's in a different tab. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to make it smaller. Um, I think my colleague's going to just change the screen so that's that's the, that screen gets shared. Okay, so that's that one. So if you click on that on your phones, you will hopefully get up um, a couple of companies there. The advantage of this, of course, is you only ever need to print this once, and it's always up to date for people looking at the registered offices. So there's a little cute little extra that we put in our system um, to, again, cut down the admin and cut down that annoying thing of having to constantly reprint uh, registered office lists. So uh, hopefully you've all clicked that now. We've only got an hour, so I need to move rapidly on uh, through through to the uh, the more content. Okay, so I'm just going to get my screen back moved again. That one. Oh, that's BTC. And. It's a right click, is it? Um, go there, that's it. Okay. Are we back in? Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, I believe that you can see that. Um, so we're now back at our home page again, having done Tim, that. Tim, can you confirm that you can see the home page? Uh, Dan? Yep, we can see that, yep. Okay, okay that's you. fine. Pro pro probably because this is a little bit complex to change screens, um, you're, you're going to have to take my word for it for certain things a little bit further into the presentation because it's, 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 it is quite fiddly to change the screens over in this particular environment that we have here. Um, so let's have a quick look at the product itself. Um, right. Now, synchronization. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about two levels of synchronization because obviously you, you can see that um, if you've got your own data, there are certain advantages. You'll become aware that over at Companies House, because they're a registry and they're accepting data just on what, what they're given, you will have um, people with surnames and middle names, uh, people without the same person without a middle name will have a duplicate record at Companies House because they're legally obligated to ex assume that that is actually a different person. So the design of the original annual returns used to send shareholders in with an initial and a surname. So uh, obviously when that all got computerized, it was not too compatible with the idea of having the same person not creating multiple records yeah. or versions of their their, 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 their same um, their same thing. So, so what, what, what's happening here is we need to basically resolve that into our own data. So your data on here has got certain features in it which will enable you to resolve the duplication that you, you may, if you're a web filing user, not even realize that it, 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 it is over at company's house. So we have, uh, if we look at all our people involved in the system, we have an automatic uh, AI module which actually works out whether people are definite duplicates or possible duplicates. So maybe father and son with different dates of birth, maybe maybe father and son with different uh, middle names, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's a certain amount of uh, duplication checking there, but essentially the data is yours. How do you know that the important stuff is the same as companies have? So with our system, we are running, you don't have to do anything, we're running in the background, a constant query to companies house. Four companies a second, we have around about 300,000 companies to go through on our server. So um, we, we, it runs about every 30 hours. Your key dates, that's accounts filing dates, confirmation dates, et cetera, et cetera. Whether there's a strike off notice, the corporation dates, et cetera, 
are all checked at company's house and resynchronized with company's house. So essentially, you can be very confident that the important dates, which the system is giving you via two means, uh, deadlines reports, uh, such as this one. Um, so here we have a deadline report you, you can see. Um, all those dates are checked around about 250 times a year. And you can be very confident that the dates you see are the correct dates. One of the things the COSET system is doing is it's bringing to your attention, both through these reports and through emails, which it generates, um, the filing deadlines, particularly important for accounts filing, obviously, where you get a hundred and fifty pound fine, a hundred and fifty pounds <laughs> saved. One late filing saved by a COSEC system is going to save you the, uh, the 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 equivalent of around about twenty five companies' fees. So just by saving a, a one late filing a year on a COSEC is going to uh, introduce quite a lot of cost justification for running a system. So I want you to notice just, just briefly some uh, little features of our system here. First of all, you can have unlimited number of staff. So when you uh, want to filter, you can filter by all your staff, or you can filter by uh, various other uh, searchable fields, or practice reference if you've got multiple offices, client references, of course, uh, and you can filter or show various things in your reports there on the screen. And those filter options can be saved because you have to say unlimited staff members so we have we have three staff members here and they can have um, levels of privilege so you can have read-only users and full access users and administrator users that can deal with staff leaving and changing passwords of that nature you might have noticed as well that every table has this on it uh, this is print and export and it's a very useful tool so for instance were I to go company show all companies, live companies, and uh, press the print and export screen. Uh, again, I, I probably won't be able to bring this, show it to you in, in, in Excel, but essentially you get two options, one of which is the printable view option, strips out all the menus and just gives you a report you can print there and then uh, uh, on your printer. And the other one is this one here, if you can see the mouse, export to CSV, very useful if you've got specific um, in-house procedures that are not covered by the general uh, uh, thing. So I'm, I'm being told you might not be able to see this tab. Um, can, can, can you see this tab, um, yeah. Dan? Uh, we're just viewing the list of companies at the moment. You can see the tab. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you, you, oh, so you're just looking at a list of companies. You're not seeing. We the can see that screen. second tab that you've. Yeah, we can see that second. So you, you get the changeover, yeah. Yeah. You, you, so it says, okay. okay, that's good. So that's going to give me a lot more freedom to uh, to, to 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 demonstrate. So you, virtually any table in the system, you can export lists of people, officers, directors, share voting classes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, that that's quite a useful feature for uh, uh, you know for, for for use of the system. So what I'm going to show you now um is something else which the the web file is I, I didn't mention at the time but it comes under confirmation statement you'll all want to see how easy it is or not or otherwise to file a confirmation statement so i'm going to go under the, my filing menu i can't there's nothing there yet and the reason there's nothing there yet uh, if i go back to my home page is i haven't picked up a company so before i go and pick up a company i'll just go through with a home page we, we have a number of tools one of which is workflow pending events action station Pending events here covers those things where you're preparing a share allotment. It's not yet on the register. You don't want it to show up in filing. So you can tick it to be pending. Um, so we, have, we, have, we can have a list of uh, pending events. So here we have a share transfer uh, that's pending. Shouldn't yet appear on filing or anything like that until it's unticked and, 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 and live. Uh, we also have workflow. I don't think in this case there's going to be anything in workflow because it's a time for demo game. Okay. But we have the action station. And the action station essentially looks around in your data every time it's called up and says, hmm, I think this bit of work here needs being, you need telling about. So here it's telling you about this uh, five days ago that there was a strike off notice. Um, items pending. So it says here's some pending items that need work on. Um, and here are other events that you've done on the system that you, you might want to you know, go, and, go and look at. So here's a company, Devilgate Drive. Um, change of company name, um, some uh, director who changed their, their residential address. 
So you can click on those and go straight to the thing and follow the work through. So that's the action station. It comes up because we've just signed into the system. We haven't chosen any companies yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a company. And I'm going to pick up my Devilgate drive here. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very simple company, <laughs> this one. It's got one officer, Susie Quattro, of course, and I think a couple of shares and no dividends in it as, as such. And, and I'm gonna use it just to, just to show you straight away uh, confirmation statement filing. So two things are coming to confirmation statement filing. I believe most of you are sending something out to the client to say, yes, we the client agree that this is the state of the uh, company so that they can confirm and you can confirm on their part so that you're signing off something which they have not signed off themselves the client so you're passing through that responsibility to do that um, it used to be entirely feasible to send people out the annual return because it had the directors on it it had the registered office etc now if you send the client a confirmation statement it's insufficient. There's not enough data on it to confirm that all the filing is up to date because the simplest version is just we confirm it's up to date. So sending out a confirmation statement is insufficient to cover your backs if you make an in, in, inaccurate filing state. So we have produced the client checklist. The client checklist for our confirmation statement is something that you can pin to an email, you can have it encrypted, et cetera, et cetera, and it will go out there. You can customize the wording on, and it's of this form. So here we're gonna go save and show the checklist. There doesn't appear to be any dates in this one. So I'm not quite sure it's gonna, gonna come up, but we'll see. Uh, next, well, we'll just put a confirmation statement review date in, save it and show it. And, okay, so I'm gonna pick a different company. We've got a different company up yes. here. Zoo, okay, so I'm gonna pick up a Zoo. Inc incidentally, just as I, I, I don't know if you noticed that, but I, I just went up to the there and I popped out the menu. We uh, we have a system that's designed for accountants and we realize that you want to jump around between one thing and the next thing and it's more than it just being walking you through things step by step you need that ability to jump between one thing and another so we have a, a slightly different uh, approach to the to the uh, interface where we can pop out the menu at any stage and go anywhere else so what we're going to do is I'm going to go go to my companies uh, and change to this company called Zoo Limited, which I understand has been prepared, so that when I go and file it, we'll actually have some sensible dates in it. So here we've got some dates. Yes, it has. Far fewer warnings. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it. And I'm going to hope that you can see the PDF that's come up. Is that, is that right, Dan? Yeah. Yeah, can we see can it? see that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this is a PDF that the standard wording is, is designed to, is, is, you, you might want to simplify it if you can. You can, any of these uh, descriptive wordings you can change, they're all customizable. Um, essentially, we try to do things like your, your clients that don't want their registered office, uh, don't want their residential addresses shown at company's house and they, 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 you know, they ask you questions, blah, blah, blah. We just try and explain that Although we have to send it in, the company's house mustn't show it. So we're trying to prevent them having to ring in and, and get that cleared up. So the, the confirmation statement checklist consists of a description of what we need to know from them. Okay, What we've actually got at the moment and any corrections they want to put in the box. You can download that as encrypted uh, and so that you can email it straight to the client under your GDPR policy or you can download it and send it to virtual signature or just send it out or even send it out on paper. It's, it's entirely up to you how you do it. Second most popular thing on the system, very, very popular with people, not just because it covers your back uh, as accountants, but also it's just giving you that once a year opportunity to check in with the clients that their details are correct because very frequently, especially flat management companies, we find that people will go in and, you know, the property will change hands, solicitors will do it, and you don't get told that things are so very good just to check in with the clients again increasing accuracy cutting down on admin time sorting out problems etc cetera, etc cetera. so here we have share classes etc cetera, etc cetera. shareholders blah 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 and so they just look at that and say yeah that's okay and then sign that off there's a little box at the bottom 
which essentially says, uh, which also includes for some reason it's not rolling here, uh, says when you created it, which member of staff created it, and the email. So they, they can sign a proper box and they can then, um, they, 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 know, they know who to talk to uh, about, the, about the work that, uh, that's coming back to them. So if I just cancel out of that, that's one half of confirmation statement uh, preparation. It's obviously optional. You can stick with whatever systems you're using at the moment. Um, if I come out of that one uh, and I can go to filing, the confirmation statement itself uh, is then ludicrously straightforward because you will have done your filing you, uh, through the year, any changes on the system itself, it will be ready to go. So here we have uh, a summary of the, the information and literally were I to click that submit button, <laughs> it would be off to company's house and this non, uh, non-existent company would be filing its, its confirmation statement in two clicks, all COSEX decent systems, decent COSEX systems, it, it's just a couple of clicks to file a confirmation statement. So that's filing confirmation statements, obviously a key uh, ingredient to the system. Um, so the next things we want to talk about are um, what happens with, hmm, let's see, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to do um, dividends for you because obviously dividends is a, is, is a, is a big uh, issue. So I'm going to go to what's called the connections page. So this is, you've got company details and in your details, you'll have various things to do with the company, such as its account dates, confirmation, registered office, et cetera, et cetera. And in your connections page, which is your other data page, you'll have those people that have roles or, or who are connected to the company of collections of data. So you'll have directors, current shareholders, share allotment, share transfers, uh, PSC register, which I mentioned earlier, and dividend distributions. So here we've got some uh, dividend distributions. What's happened here is there are some in the past which have been done, and there is one here for the 3rd of August. It's got a green pencil. We just use green pencils for picking things up. So this, we're going to have a look at this distribution. It hasn't been made yet. It's for £10,000, so lucky people, um, and a, and a, or £100 a share. It's, you can fill either of those in. Um, you'll have the year end, which will come in automatically. So you just choose the date of payment. So essentially, punter comes through the door, says, I want to distribute £10,000. You say, OK, what date do you want shareholders on? And then you just, just go for it. So there we are. Make the individual voucher records. And that is now done. So there we have all the vouchers for the shareholders works out who the shareholders are, how many shares they've got on the qualifying date, and therefore the um, uh, the, the, the vouchers and the distribution. So I'm thinking that you will be able to see the vouchers. Um, so these vouchers have been produced automatically through, through dividends. Um, they are in the same format as the share certificates. So it, it produces a pack. Again, share certificates and dividend vouchers, all customizable templates. You can use your own, design your own, et cetera, et cetera, uh, using the onboard designer. So that very briefly is dividends. We do do waivers as well, but I haven't got time really to go into that. Again, I'll, I'll bump into the pop, uh, the, the, um, pop out menu and go somewhere else. And the somewhere else I'm going to go is PSCs. Okay. Now, to automate PSCs, we need to have, we need to know what, the, what share classes are voting and what share classes are not voting, because otherwise you won't be able to come up with the right percentages necessarily for the shareholders voting and shareholdings. You also need to know what kind of person a person is, whether it's a person, company RLE, a trust, joint shareholder, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna look at a couple of things that, that are gonna resolve themselves into automatic PSCs. And obviously you're going to need the uh, shareholdings as well, the allotments and the transfers. Okay, So I'm going to go and pick up the company which I personally put on there yesterday for this webinar. Uh, so I can do my, my PSC demo, uh, demo and you can see how that all works. Okay, So this is my Demogate Drive company. First thing I'm going to do, select all voting share classes. Okay, So these are the voting share classes. Where again, we have another little AI module that we worked on that actually looks at the description of the share class. 
who looks at the share class and tries to work out whether the share class has got voting or not according to the sentences which have been provided in the particulars. So we have a tick box which the automatic PSC uses and we need to you need to know if your share classes are voting or non-voting and this report will tell you for all your companies whether you've got them in there as voting shares or not. So again, increase of accuracy, increase of consolidation, good quality data. So here it's it's worked out that these are uh, voting shares and the reason why it thinks they are. And here it's come across when it says, these shares shall not carry a right to attend and vote. And the tick box is ticked. So it's worked out from that using the full AI module that um, the uh, that this one, it thinks that should be, that should be a no. Uh, in there. Okay. So that zoo limited uh, has got a problem, something for you to look at in the general sense. So that's the first thing, voting share classes, we're going to assume they're okay. okay. So what we're going to do now, um, we are going to go, it, what you'll notice here of course is that for companies with only one share class, like Devilgate Drive, it's not in this list because if you've only got one share class, obviously it's got voting rights. So this is only for companies with multiple share classes. So uh, here we go. The next thing we're going to do is look at people. And we're going to look at what these kind of people are. So here I've got a guy called um, Cliff Richard Singer. Goodness knows uh, why. Uh, but here he is as an individual. OK. And you will see here he's, he's a human being. He's not a joint shareholder, an RLE. Um, he's not a client company. In other words, he's, he's not a person pointing back to one of your companies. He's not a foreign firm. So just, he's a human being. So he's got human being details. Okay. Now, to enable an, uh, automation of the uh, PSCs, we also need to pick out other entities like trusts and joint shareholders. So here he is with Katie Holmes as joint shareholders. This entry is a joint shareholder if you just drop down here you can see that this entry is made up of two other people on the person list okay so that's how we build up the complex structures we do it very simply at this level so that it, all the complexity is done by the system so we now have two key elements to building our PSC register okay first one is voting and non-voting share classes and the other is describing entities or people in the correct way are they corporates are they joint shareholders are they people so this has given us a good basis from which to automate our psc the other thing we're going to do in our connection screen now is we're just going to have a quick look at what the share situation is so here we've got susie quattro in our devilgate drive limited she has got a hundred shares so she will be at her 75 percent uh, psc um, uh, on that basis and then over in share transfers, we've got a pending share transfer um, to purchase of own shares. Now, purchase of own shares is a special category, which we deal with all the special categories. So we're going to be transferring the pending, the purchase of own shares or the buyback is pending. So it shouldn't turn up in the automation of a PSC register. So I'm just going to slide along to the PSC register. No data has been entered. So the system has worked out that this person holds 75% of the voting rights, 75% of the shares, and obviously then the right to remove the board. So that's completely automatic. And so what we're going to do now, I'm going to go to the share transfers, and I'm going to effect the purchase to own shares, quite simply saying, okay, it's no longer pending, it's done. So half the shares have now been uh, taken off the board. So we would imagine that Susie Quattro is going to have a different PSC setting, because half the shares have disappeared. So we're going to go along now to our connection screen have a quick look at that and so what, what we do now is we actually find that the PSC register is exactly the same as it was and the reason is Susie Quattro still owns 100% of the shares but she owns 100% of 50 shares instead of 100% of 100 shares because the buyback has removed 50 shares from the schedule so again PSC automation is clever enough to realize that, that, that she still owns 100% of the shares because there's been a buyback okay so what we're going to do now, I'm going to go straight to my transfers. And I'm going to arrange a transfer of this uh, person's share, Susie Quattro's shares. And the transferee is not going to be special share transaction. It's going to be Cliff and Kate jointly. Okay. So basically, she's going to transfer half her shareholding to a joint shareholder. So I'm going to save that. 
So now we have a different situation under the connection screen. Current shareholders, there are now a joint shareholder and Susie, okay? And that, uh, there's a date there, that changed on the 7th of August. So if I slide along to my PSC register, I've now got Susie Quattro being a 75% um, uh, PSC in both cases, up until the 7th of, of um, uh, August here. And then from the 7th of August, she drops down to being a 25 to 50% shareholder, can no longer dismiss the board of uh, uh, directors. And then what we have here, because with joint shareholders, as you're probably aware, each of the joint shareholders is considered to have the full measure of control over the position and all the share quantity. So here's Cliff and Katie. They are also both now 25 to 50% shareholders, 25% to 50% voting rights, even though the sum of all that lot adds up to 150%, it's still correct. We haven't typed in anything, it's completely automatic. So that's a big feature of our, our system and it's very good for accuracy and, and saving time and saving thought, particularly if you've got complex situations with share conversions, trusts or anything of that nature. So that's, that's that. Now, obviously this is gonna give rise to some filing. So because we've automated the PSCs, one of the things that we also want to do is to go, um, leave our cancel button always bottom right here, leave there, we want to go to filing. So the next thing that we've automated is called the filing center. Well, what the filing center does is it looks through the history of the company and says, I think that these forms needed to have been filed. So we've got PSC01 for Susie Quattro here, We've got PSC01, this is her change of details, which I don't know if you remember was on that action station, so she changed her address, PSC04 change of address there. Um, PSC01 notifications for the two new ones and a PSC change of votes there. So we've automated the PSCs, but we've also automated the form filing, not just for the PSCs, but for all the forms as well, because we have certain things under say our connection screen, uh, if you're looking at share allotments, they have a statutory date. So it's very easy to automate when the filing should be done. But there are plenty of things. Um, for instance, if we go to our homepage and we look at people, right, then we are going to have, um, sorry, just like if someone get the phone. Um, we, if we go to our, our homepage here, uh, look, at, look, at, uh, look at people. I think we had Susie Quattro down here. Pick her up. Things which don't have, uh, a statutory date, we give them a date anyway. So here's a date of change here. So her change of a residential address, we gave it a date there, 5th of 8th. So essentially, once you, you, you've dated it, cancel out of there, go and look in our uh, work management thing, go to the action station, and here's her change of address here, ready for you to process. So just helping you keep control of the work and, and, and get the work done. So that's that one. Um, so we've done PSCs, we've done dividends, uh, you've got to briefly look at very complex share transactions, which we can do. There are 1,700 pages on this, uh, web pages on this uh, product. So we are not going to get through them all uh, by any means. I will just tell you briefly, um, we do formations. So I don't have a formation here. So were I to form a new company, I can form one uh, of using my own uh, officers. Uh, limited by shares guarantee or LLPs up to listed market. So up to the AIM market, we can do LLPs. Um, and then under here, we have um, all sorts, multiple share, any number of share classes, um, custom articles. So these are all done by First Corporate uh, for us. Um, SIC code, so we have a, a helpful SIC code uh, lookup type thing, et cetera, et cetera. So, Hopefully the punters themselves will be doing the companies or you'll be forming them for you. And these formed companies will then be moved uh, straight through into COSEC. And again, uh, persons of significant control, again, is automated for the formation process as well as the COSEC process. So that's that. Um, and I would just also say, you've seen some form filing, just very conscious of being short of time. So um, what I want to do now is just move into the question which you COSEC users of users of other systems will um, be asking about how easy is it to get your data on and how complete is it, okay? So you're gonna either be using one of our competitors or 
Um, we're a specialist COSEC house, uh, software house. So uh, we have a very long leg legacy. Personally, those of you probably over about 50 years of age will remember the first COSEC product, which was called Jordan's PC Secretary. I wrote that. Um, so we went forward to there. This company that we use to, to, for this product has been in existence since 2011, um, was incorporated then. We wrote the product for the 2009 change uh, to the 2006 Companies Act. So we've been around for a decade with this product. I've been around with the Cosec product for um, something like X years, X being a number more than I really want to think about, to be honest. Um, Kate, uh, who's in this business uh, with me, uh, had her own accountancy practice. Uh, and we, because COSEC is a compliance thing, nobody gets to save tax. It's not very attractive to clients. It's just a chore, really. But it's a different kind of work to the rest of work you do. That's why we specialize in providing a full COSEC solution for our accountancy product owners. And the difference between the various people that we supply for is obviously their talking, uh, their system is talking to the rest of their system. So CS Solution is talking to, to BTC and we obviously do the same for uh, KPM and for CCH. And we have a standalone version for first corporate as well. So if you are a KPM, a CCH user, or you use the first order standalone system and you want to move to BTC, there's no resistance to that at all. It's all on our servers anyway. You literally sign a bit of paper with your existing supplier to make sure they're happy. And we flip it over overnight and you get everything, even the sign-ons, even the records of what the staff has done, all the company history from your previous account. So migrating from any of those products is instantaneous and absolutely trouble-free. The data is, it's the same data essentially. You're just talking about different integration. If you're moving from uh, our main competitor or any of the legacy systems, then we provide a spreadsheet. What you do is you fill it with the company number and the filing code, and we, and also client reference or anything else you want to put in a staff structure if you want to, managers, partners, etc. Uh, and on that spreadsheet, we take that spreadsheet and then we go to Companies House in a back office process and we upload all your companies for brand new, fresh upload from Companies House, all up to date. After that, after your data is on the system, as I say, every 30 hours or so, your key dates are being checked. So from that moment onwards, you should be finding that you are getting plenty of notice about late filing of accounts coming up and that sort of thing, both by email and, and uh, uh, other methods. So hopefully you should be able to view my screen if you can see that okay. Yes. Yeah, so if you, I'm going to synchronize the data, I've, I've added myself here as a client, as an individual. Um, in this case, we're going to say it's maybe a, a director of a limited company. Um, so we can add a new client or we can synchronize existing data. So synchronize existing data will update um, information on the client that we already have within BTC software, whereas adding a new client is essentially taking uh, new client information um, an example might be you set up a limited company within company secretarial, you formed it um, as company secretarial was act as the master because of the uh, the integration with Companies House and the fact that you can form companies on there. You would form the companies on company secretarial and then synchronize them with the practice management database. So if I were to add a new client, you can see here I've got um, myself here. Um, and it's got my details. So either what I can do is I can choose the add option. And I can add in a reference and give it a client type. So I might say it's a private client. I can save and close that. It will go from a, a kind of a yellow box, an amber box to say it's not quite ready to a nice green box. And then if I click OK, it will then synchronize that with a practice management database and it will add that director directly into the company. Um, it's the exact same process for, for limited companies and LLPs. Um, so it's using the synchronized data option. And then when we go back to my individual view, we'll see that as well as uh, the existing client I can have that I could have updated, I've added a, a brand new client in there with with the reference. And it's, just, it's really as it's, it's simple as that. Shall I, uh, shall I hand back to um, 
to yourself, okay, and Clint? Okay. Um, Did you do the ad as well? Uh, um, well, you 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 have a login into our system too, but I, I yes, this is the problem with the login because obviously we have a, a number of accounts, etc. So um, uh, the coming back to us, I think, uh, I think we're pretty well done. we are pretty yeah. well yeah, done. So we do. basically would like to see if there are any uh, questions. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've just got a, a closing comment, and that's about the fact that the data is on the cloud, and just that people should know that the data and both its backup servers are all UK-based under GDPR. Um, all the personal data in the um, database is all encrypted, and not only that, but every single person has their individual encryption key. So that uh, uh, getting into um, you know the chance of data being stolen out is absolutely minimised. Um, the, 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 there's not even a, a sort of master key to find. Every single person has their own their, their own key, and uh, so far we've not uh, we, we've had no security issues that, that certainly that we've been aware of. We don't believe we've had any security issues uh, in the uh, ten years that we've been running servers and running this on the cloud. So. A confident uh, place to hold your data, all UK based and backed up, backed up and uh, twice over, uh, including one uh, off site uh, and one um, uh, synchronized um, uh, server in, in different locations in the UK. So um, we can uh, possibly um, move on to any questions. Uh, I don't think I can see them. Uh, yep. So if okay. So what I'll do is I'll just um, I'll just leave this this last um, page open just while I'm I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Um, yeah. So as Kate said, we we can we're more than happy to take any questions that you do have. Um, any questions in relation to um, the kind of the, the actual COSEC module and functionality, Clint, I'll probably and and Kate, I'll have to uh, maybe pass over to you on those ones. Um, yeah. But any information in terms of uh, pricing, because I can see quite a number of. Uh, have you have asked about pricing the price obviously is dependent on the amount of companies that you have within the solution what's best in terms of the pricing is if you um, drop us uh, an email you can drop us an email at sales at btc software or you can directly give us a call and what we can do is we can put a quote together for you based on uh, the number of, of companies that you have um, and, and wh whether you need any of our our other products as well so whether you need accounts production or company secretary or so on so pricing is kind of dependent on the the, the amount of companies that you have within the software the size of the business um but yeah so um i'll just start by reading some of these out so um a couple of questions we have got um mentioned about will there be a recording um yes absolutely so this uh, webinar is uh, recorded so it will be available on our YouTube channel, um, kind of a bit of a shameless plug. I, I would recommend that if you haven't already checked out our YouTube channel, um, please do. There's so many different videos on there in terms of uh, showcase for different types of products. There's um, support based videos um, and there's pre-recorded webinars on there. So um, if you haven't already checked out the YouTube channel, uh, you can either just search BTC software or it'll be youtube.com slash BTC software. Um, the screen Dan has just shown, does this mean all directors have two accounts? Um, you can, you can synchronize a, an existing director. Um, I deliberately added a new one to show you what, um, the synchronizing of a, a, a new client would be like, but if you wanted to update an existing, um, director within the software, then, then you, you can do that as well. The options there are available. Um, based on per company or can you get a bulk package? Yep, so the pricing is based um, per company. Um, but as I said, we can put together a quote for you based on the number of clients that you have. Um, so we can, yeah, we can do that no problem free of charge. Um, for existing PM solutions, how much is it to add to the package? Again, yeah, it completely, it, it completely depends um, on the amount of companies that you have. So again, get in contact with us and we can put a quote together for you. Um, we've got, I suppose, a question for you, Clint, is um, are there any uh, additional add-on features within the company secretarial module or um, 
is everything included that you've that you've shown that you've shown today? Uh, no, we, we don't have any uh, upselling at all. We have an onboard cloud library. Um, one of our other resellers upsells that, but we, we um, apart from that, no, it's all included. So archived companies, full companies, all the functionality, um, the tech support, and all the upgrades. So we never issue an upgrade and say no, you can't have this upgrade. You have to pay for it. It's always all, all, all inclusive. So we have things like company charts coming on for groups and things like that fairly shortly, and um, uh, all, all, all automated uh, workflow stuff. All, all will be built into the system and released. You, you you don't have to do any installs or anything like that. All flat based. You'll just it'll just be there, and there will be no costs. And there are no costs for users either. So you can have as many many users as you wish. There's no charges, extra charges for those. So a very simple. Uh, pricing structure and also when you you, you break the bands I, I, I believe that your pricing structure that you, you for each company that you've broken the band by you pay the new reduced rate and you don't as in some products have to buy a block of uh, subscription so there's no buying forward buying of large blocks of subscriptions you only pay for the uh, the companies that you have and use yeah exactly yeah yeah, that's spot on no. the pricing. Okay, so any more that's questions? Uh, uh, anyone, if, if anyone has any questions, they can type them or email, uh, as John said earlier. I think uh, I think it needs to be pointed out from me that because we've been uh, limited on time, we have a large system to demonstrate. There are swathes, massive swathes of that system which I haven't showed. Uh, you know, document production, forms, e-filing, how that's managed. Loads and loads of stuff that we simply didn't have time to um, uh, to really demonstrate in any way at all. Cloud library, onboard cloud library, workflow, um, and that sort of thing. We did look at action station briefly, but generally there are, let's say, 1,700 web pages on that site. So uh, uh, a lot of um, a lot of stuff there, just really not time to look at it at all. The whole of companies' um, uh, uh, web information is is built into the system. Um, so that you can do comparisons between what company's house has got and what you've got, downloads, all sorts of stuff like that, which as I say, we just didn't have time to, uh, to to go into that in any detail at all. Yeah. And we, um, I think we we have got the pre-recorded um, COSEC webinar that we, or, or two previous ones that we've done before, which you which we kind of took a slightly different take on things than than today. Um, in terms, I think that was quite heavy in terms of the the functionality, whereas today was quite um, based around the kind of the benefits of mm. of using a, a COSEC solution and and upgrading from a COSEC solution to just using the company's house website. And mm -hmm. um, we've got quite a good question here, actually, uh, probably for you, Clint. Are dividends integrated with the personal tax returns? Uh, no, uh, not at the current time. Uh, we do actually on the COSEC side have that facility, so. Um, it could be taken up by BTC to to um, copy that information into uh, the personal tax side. But what we do have is uh, unlimited login. So if you've, if you've got people working on personal tax, uh, there's absolutely no reason at all why they shouldn't be set up as a uh, uh, having a login into into COSEC. Um, and and they can have a login on a read-only basis if that's uh, that's appropriate to pull that information. And don't forget with the print and export button. They will always be able to get information out of COSEC as a, uh, as a Excel spreadsheet or, or, or as a printable form. So they get access to that information to say that, that there may be steps in, in, in the near or medium term to uh, to actually bring that um, uh, dividend information over because it is available uh, as part of our integration um, uh, plugin to, to to transmit that data over. So uh, that, that that's to be seen. Perfect. Okay, I think that's um, I think that's all the questions. If there is anything that we haven't answered, or if you do have any questions you want to ask them uh, privately, then obviously you can you can email us directly. Um, my email address personally would be uh, Dan Keen, all one word at BTC Software. Um, but you're obviously all, all, also welcome to email sales at BTC Software. Um, and I think that will uh, that will draw a conclusion to today's webinar. So thank you. Uh, everyone for your attendance thank you uh thank you Kate as well um for, for helping out on this uh, this webinar and giving us a, an insightful view of the company secretarial solution um
there will be a recorded session that will be uploaded onto the YouTube channel. So do um, take a look out for that. Um, and if you want it emailed to you personally, uh, then again, just drop us a message. But thank you again. And um, we'll uh, hopefully see you on the next webinar.